so I guess this sort of leads into what is it that Anubis is like trying to solve? Like, why would anybody actually want to use Anubis? Like, what is what is the issue on the web that needs something like this, or like our Cloudflare has been working on, or any of the other tooling that's popped up over the past year or so? The TLDR of what it does is it changes the is why someone would need it is that it changes the economics around web scraping. Mm, mm. Right now, a lot of web scraping is done under the assumption that it's like reasonably fast and lightweight to get a response made for any given route on the server, right? Mm -hmm. And this is not always the case. Uh, things like Git blame are very compute intensive, especially if you do it with like a fresh checkout of the Linux kernel. If you do git blame on any random line in the kernel on a fresh checkout, um, your system is going to be suffering for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. And at scale with a bunch of bots out there, like these bots, they operate on the logic of for link in page, in queue a message to click on that link from another IP address. Mm -hmm. And this just is a torrent of overwhelming to basically any computer. Yeah, like, especially in sites that have a lot of uh, interconnectivity like you would have in a wiki, for example. Oh, yeah. Um, I more recently, uh, Sourceware, the GCC, uh, GCC Git server, mm -hmm. has a machine with, you know, like 24 CPU cores, 512 gigabytes of RAM, mm -hmm. and they have a system load of, like, 150 and for reference in order to convert that into something that you can more easily understand mm -hmm. uh it's easier to round it up to 25 cpu cores mm -hmm. and then divide the system load by the number of cpu cores and that tells you how much system backlog there is mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. with 25 to 150 that's like what uh like a six times backlog mm -hmm. yeah it's nuts um a, a six times backlog is bad i think that's the technical term <laughs> seems on point to me yeah um and like the the really frustrating part about a lot of it is that mm -hmm. a lot of normal ip reputation stuff it just doesn't work right. because these bots like in the case of amazon's bot in particular they have some ip address from literally ad address ranges from literally every range amazon controls and they control like what is it 15 percent of the ipv4 constellation <laughs> it's something nuts like that and I didn't, okay, I because there's so that. many different ip addresses coming from so many different bgp autonomous systems uh ip reputation doesn't work Mm -hmm. uh, you could write a custom thing to do reverse DNS for every Amazon IP address, and then if it has if it matches Amazon bot, then deny it. But that's slow, expensive, and those IP addresses will never be used again. So it's just basically adding lag into the mix for no reason. There's and then there's the really really terrible part, mm -hmm. which is the residential proxies that look like Google Chrome on the wire. Mm hmm Oh gosh. Uh, have you heard of the residential proxy problem? Um no. I'm not aware of this one. So people keep using free VPNs. Aha. Uh -huh. The common wisdom is that when you do not pay, you are the product. Sure. When you install one of those free VPNs, they usually want you to install the, you know, like uh the super VP, super free VPN client on your desktop computer. Mm -hmm. And then you use that and then it puts everything through a VPN and it looks like you're fine. Except what it's actually doing in the background is letting people pay for your bandwidth to be able to do things like their sketchy scraping and go out that way. Wait, what? Yeah. They literally will have users of free VPNs and other analytics SDKs turned into zombies in a giant botnet that people use to do web scraping with. Because then it looks like residential IPs to the service operators. 
And then because they also run things that look like headless Chrome on the, or look like Google Chrome on the wire, uh -huh. the operator just thinks it's a new user f using Google Chrome, which, you know, new user from a residential IP address using Google Chrome. That's like the John Smith of browser <laughs> connections, right, right? Right. And that that is what people want. That is what operators want. People want people using Windows, Google Chrome, and from a residential IP to visit their site. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Except these bots will just hit every punishing link over and over and over until the server keels over. And then when the server is responding with 500s, they mm -hmm. speed up because responding with a 500 is faster and thus it empties the backfill faster. I was not so aware of this when... problem at all. Oh, it is horrible. <clears throat> oh, it is abysmal. And there's probably not any way to really stop it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I've been theory, theory crafting with some friends and we've been trying to figure out like, okay, what is the motive here? What is mm -hmm. the modus operandi? Like, they're going to run out of storage at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Our current pet theory is that they're not going to run out of storage because they're not storing anything. Mm -hmm. And that this is either some attempt to train a browser use agent or a uh, AI model that knows how to use the web, or it is feeding directly from like the web crawling into model training. Hmm. We can't find a reason why that would be a good idea to like I, the people I'm talking with this are like experts in generative AI, and we've been trying to find like why someone would do this and all we have are just like crackpot conspiracy theories those are the most fun ones though well like, the best conspiracy theories are believable on it on their face Fair. right <clears throat> and and the one about like either a browser use agent or directly feeding it into the training process mm -hmm. are so stupid they're plausible right like i uh, I don't know who writes whatever's going on in this world, but it seems like it, in order for things to happen, they have to be just stupid enough in order to get past the writer's <laughs> approval. <laughs> I mean, you know, am I over, wrong? The past, over the past decade, you might be onto something. <sighs> oh. Either way, that's why that that's also why I try to make things just just surreal enough, so uh -huh. that way it seems plausible. Right, right, right. Yeah, but it's either an AI model that knows how to use browsers more natively, or it's them feeding directly into training. Or mm -hmm. the secret third thing, which is even more stupid and hilarious than I just remembered. It could be some startup being very clever and doing some sort of data arbitrage thing, or arbitrage? I've never heard that word out loud. Arbitrage, I think, but is the correct pronunciation. Let's, let's say arbitrage and let the comments battle it out. Um, but it's, it's some kind of data arbitrage thing where somebody is trying to sell access to quote unquote new data because it was scraped newer. Mm -hmm. And that may actually be a bit more plausible now that I think about it. But I just, I, I just have no idea what they would want it for. I don't even know if it's actually for generative AI stuff. It, a lot of people have been assuming it's for generative AI because like, well, Alexa's the Amazon Alexa team is about to do something involving Langle Mangles, mm -hmm. but uh, we, you just get the flood of requests that just come out of nowhere. They overwhelm your server, and then when it falls over and says mercy, they speed up and make it worse. So right. there, there's no way to win. The w the way you win is you are uh, unplug, <laughs> just unplug the power, and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's that's also why i sort of made the the main hack in anubis uh involving the most load bearing word in a user agent string mm -hmm. mozilla mm -hmm. uh in several thousand years i'm pretty sure that historians are going to look back and that and think that the word mozilla is something that meant browser but it is something that has stuck around in user agent strings for a very long time, and people are loath to change it because of a uh, sketchy practice called user agent sniffing, mm. where 
old versions of websites. We're talking way before the birth, uh, way back when Pluto was a planet. Um, would the server would serve a different version for Mozilla, the browser Mozilla, not the company Mozilla, and uh, Internet Explorer. Uh... And so Internet Explorer became compatible with Mozilla features, but nobody was seeing those Mozilla compatible websites because all their ser all the servers thought it, they were talking to Internet Explorer, so it sent the decrepit Internet Explorer compliant version. And then Microsoft added Mozilla to their user agent string. Right at the front. Right. And that's why Anubis uses Mozilla. Uh, there is actually a botnet that has been bypassing it by using Opera instead of Mozilla. <laughs> but we were able to notice that instantly because they lacked the word Mozilla. Mm. And that is the pro gamer move. So one of the like worst parts of how Anubis is made ended up actually being a strength. Remember out there, the audience, some thorns have roses. So with the whole um with the whole like scraping thing, we've we've had like web crawlers for a long time now. Like the idea of crawling sites and understanding how sites link together like this is like the basis of a search engine and for a long time now it hasn't really been an issue like yeah you can say it's like it, it's like an extra couple of percent of of like site usage but like google yeah. things like that they're, they're pretty respectful with the way that at least with the search engine um pretty respectful yeah. with the way that they ha <clears throat> they handle crawling sites and no one's really complained about that because you also get a lot of benefit from it right like you get to be listed on these search engines there is like this what what's the word um symbiotic relationship yes that word so there's this symbiotic relationship here but i think a lot of people don't realize just as, assuming it is ai scrapers which is the most logical um the most logical thing that it could be I don't think a lot of people realize just how much information is being captured here. Because when I did my Anubis video, there were people saying, oh, why does it matter if somebody wants to come, like, scrape the site once a month? <laughs> like, yeah, oh, if that's, buddy, if that's what it was, it, was once a month. it wouldn't be oh, a problem. Oh, buddy, I wish it was once a month so much there, buddy. Oh, buddy. Like, just looking at the um, GNOME GitLab example, I think it was something like... 50 or 60 percent maybe even more like 70 percent of their traffic was coming from these bots yeah 